The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got a mixed market right now. We got the S&Ps, two points in the positive, right near 4,600. We're trading at 4,598. NASDAQ 100, barely in the positive by well as well, I should say, by 37 points or a quarter percent, trading at 15,109 right now. Dow, barely in the negative, but still above 35,000. You're negative by 14 points. Russell, negative by just one right now. Check out that action in the Russell yesterday. You talk about a move. The Russell, 50, five zero points. Basically a one-way slide yesterday from 2130 down to 2080. We'll get the exact low, 2079.10. The exact low on the Russell, quite an acceleration. You take a look at the S&Ps yesterday. Man, these markets got quite a bounce in the final 15 minutes, man. You accelerate from about 46.20 to start the day. You were at 45.75 in the final hour. And just like that, though, you finished the session at about 4,600. Overnight, you trade a little higher, you dip lower, and we're right back to where we started as of the close last night in the S&Ps. Bitcoin, talk about a little bit uh, of a little bit of a range here, near 47 and 48,000. You're trading at 47,805. Considering the market action, Bitcoin holding up relatively well this week. Crude pulling back. We'll talk about crude. We might have uh, a petroleum, strategic petroleum release coming up. That is the drop off you see there, man. Talk about some volatility. Uh, what time is that? Eight o'clock last night, eight Eastern time. You drop from 108 down almost instantly to 102. You chop around at 101 for the lows overnight. Crude down about five bucks on the session right now, 102.92. You got gold flat at 1938. Gold on Tuesday was at 1893. Silver right now at 2511. And we jumped to notes and bonds. We're getting a little bit of higher price and lower yield. We got the 10 year up nine ticks from where we were on Tuesday. You're talking about almost two full points. The move in the 10 year, just remarkable when you look at where that thing has been, where it is going. Uh, two full points, just like that. But man, you talk about a move, that's barely a bounce. You got the yields right now, 2.32%. We're approaching 2.5%. You put it on a daily. We were in quite a downtrend for lower prices and higher yield. This move really accelerating from March 7th. You had 129.04. You trade down about eight full points to 120.30. Now, just for some context here, taking a Fibonacci run, looking at the run that we've had, you're talking about a move potentially to about 124. Brings us to the 382. That's a solid point, still above where we're at right now. But you got to expect a bounce at some point, folks. When you go from 1.7% to 2.5%, the yield in the 10 year over the span of about three weeks, whew. Uh, even if you just get back within this channel line, okay, that's going to bring you up to about 124 would be the line there. Let's extend this lower channel line to the right. We'll zoom it in, okay, and where are we meeting? We're meeting at about 124.16. If it takes a little bit longer to get to that line, you are going to meet at a lower price point. Maybe that brings us right down to 124. Going to be an interesting area if you see the 10-year pop up to that price level, 124.02. We jump over to the VIX this morning. That's a pullback for you, folks. There it is. We trade from February 9th of about 20 bucks. We hang at 36 for a couple occasions. And just like that, you're back at about 20 bucks. We're trading at 1991 this morning. I would not expect the VIX to go much lower, folks. That is your parabolic move from 20 to 36, back to 20, uh, trading at 1991. And all things considered right now, you have an S&P sitting within about 200 points of all time highs. We're going to get CPI data in a couple of weeks. We got the Fed lifting off. We have all the risks that we're familiar with. Uh, I don't see the VIX going back to 15, 16, something like that with all the volatility in play in this market. We should be lucky to have it at 1992 considering the moves that we're getting. I mean, keeping in mind, right, we just moved in the S&Ps about 500 points from low to high, just remarkable to even say it. NASDAQ 100, man, I mentioned it yesterday, you had a 12,900 handle and you finished with a 15,000 handle, 2,000 
200 points. We're trading at 15,100. Remarkable. All right, let's jump around to some of the news. We'll kick it off with jobless claims. Quite a number. 202,000 for the week ended March 26th. Uh, the estimate was 196. That's an aggressive estimate in terms of historical norms. Uh, we missed that estimate, but all things considered, 200,000. That's a very healthy number. Continuing claims fell to 1.3 million. Those are one week delayed. So that is uh, as of the week ended March 19th. The rise in applications likely reflects the choppiness of the data week to week. I mean, folks, the way they analyze this data, the rise in applications, you're talking about a rise in applications of single digit, like a few thousand people with everything going on. Of course, you're going to get a little bit of volatility and choppiness in, in terms of single digits, thousands. Remarkable. Now, we got ADP numbers. The data precedes the government's Friday employment report, non-farm payroll tomorrow, 830. We're 23 and a half hours from that. It's just going to keep coming, folks. And then we come into earnings uh, to kick things off a couple weeks into April as well. We get non-farm payroll tomorrow. Look for the wage data in a big way. Uh, U.S. added about half a million jobs in March when the unemployment rate fell to 3.7%. That's what they'll be looking for. A separate report Wednesday. U.S. companies added 455,000. That was the ADP report on Wednesday added. All right, so we get that number this morning, not a huge number. All the focus is going to be on the number tomorrow. We jump to the oil story. Uh, President Biden weighing a massive release of oil to combat inflation. So it'll be interesting to see in terms of what this number is and the impact it has on the market. Obviously, it's not going to solve the supply and the demand imbalance going on in this market right now. But it's a pretty sizable release, is at least what they're considering. Uh, they're thinking about a million barrels a day is what they're looking at for several months to combat rising gasoline prices and supply shortages following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The total release may be as much as 180 million barrels, as people said. Uh, the people said, speaking on condition of anonymity. The plan is accompanied by a diplomatic push for the International Energy Agency to coordinate a global release by other countries. So they're trying to get everybody on board. We'll see if that happens. Uh, nonetheless, you're talking about maybe 180 million barrels. Now you jump over another article just talking about what that could mean for the market. Now, number one, they got a bunch of different takes here. OK, everybody's got a take, of course. OK, um, a release. This is Goldman Sachs. It's going to help the market rebalance, but it won't solve a structural deficit for oil. That's why the Goldman Sachs people get all the big bucks, because they have the hot takes. Of course it's not, right? We'll see how it goes. It is a short-term solve. Nobody is going to argue the contrary. Uh, one thing I did take note of, uh, here we go. So this is Clearview Energy Partners, LLC. Not familiar. Uh, it's hard to overstate the scale of this intervention if it bears out. It would be the largest drawdown volume announced in the 45-year history of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. It would follow the second biggest, the 50 million barrel combined sale and exchange in November. As global consumption may outstrip supply by 800,000 barrels a day. This is cool because I like the actual numbers of how this breaks down. So right now, they're looking at consumption potentially outstripping supply by 800,000 barrels a day. A release of a million barrels a day could bring supply and demand roughly into balance absent this is the key, absent further disruptions. Uh, that, however, would do little to rebuild the lean global inventory. So, you know, maybe they're trying to match up that supply demand imbalance. It's not going to cause them uh, solve the problems that Europe's got in terms of energy, folks. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll see. Crew trading a little bit lower today. Markets right now, pretty calm. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. T 
tfnn.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps, negative four points right now. Market turning a little bit lower in the last few minutes. We'll put it back to a five-minute chart. You can see a little bit of a drop-off. We were trading about 4,600 as I got on the air. Right now, trading at 4,591. Lows at about 7.30 this morning. We're coming down right to that area in the S&Ps. We'll see how we trade. NASDAQ 100. Pretty similar action right now, 15,085 lows at 730, 15,077. The Dow is negative by 63 points, actually below those lows in the last few minutes. And we got the Russell right now, negative by five. As I said, you talk about volatility in the Russell, man. Monday, 2043, we trade up almost 100 points. We're back down to 2080 and we're right near that low right now in the Russell. All right, we'll jump around to what else we have going on. We talked about crude. That's one of the stories for sure. We talked about jobless claims out there as well. And uh, let's talk about some earnings. Walgreens beats expectations after Omicron-fueled demand for tests and boosters lifted sales. Uh, beat fiscal expectations for fiscal second quarter. Same store sales for retail in the U.S., 14.7% in the three-month period compared to a year ago, the largest gain over 20 years. Just remarkable what's happening with this pandemic and how, how it's separating some winners and losers where you are. Buck 59 versus a dollar 40 revenue they beat as well 33.76 versus 33.4 billion in the quarter net income fell to 883 million or buck 02 a share from 1.03 billion in the year ago period so that's interesting right how does that happen you had Walgreens same store sales jumping 14.7 percent but they made more money last year they only made 883 million. And they made $1.03 billion last year, but they rose same-store sales by 14.7%. It's just bonkers what's going on, folks. You know that part of that's going to be inflation, right? You know part of the reason why they're not going to be making as much money is because they're paying higher costs, etc. Uh, the company said it saw growth in all categories, especially health and wellness items, including at-home COVID tests, over-the-counter medications for cough, cold, flu, and beauty thrown in there as well. At its UK-based boots chain, retail sales... Same store, 22%. Uh, E-commerce sales in the U.S. increased 38%. I mean, these are some huge numbers, man. When you look at it, profit not as big. Um, and not that that will take care of itself, but eventually things will normalize. Uh, yeah, but the market looking at that as well. 
down about two bucks, you spike higher. But I think they, they, they did the same thing there. They said, okay, you're growing same store sales at a, at a record pace, record pace, same store sales growth. And you can't even make more money than you did a year ago. What's going on there? Of course, guidance is going to be a big deal as well. The conference call began 50 minutes ago. A uh, little bit of a drop off there with the market. We're trading lower since their earnings at about 7 a.m. this morning. We'll see how they do on the open. Pretty strong numbers, but as I said, lower earnings numbers when you think about where they are uh, versus last year. But they beat. Market was expecting a buck 40. They came in at a buck 59. They beat on revenue. Same store sales at record pace. And meanwhile, they're trading lower. Not a good sign. Maybe you could, you could even call it ominous. Uh, for Walgreens, uh, they're down 9% so far this year, and they close at 47.46. Market value, about $41 billion for Walmart. All right, let's jump down to some of the other move, uh, stocks making moves. Baidu, they're a little bit lower after the SEC added the search engine company to its list of U.S. traded, US -traded China stocks that could be delisted if they don't allow American regulators to review three years' worth of financial audits uh, it's coming, folks. I imagine it's coming. Okay? Those companies, I would be careful. Uh, we'll jump to Baidu. Baidu, put it on the daily, down to 102. We're up to 143. We're going to we're gonna open at 138. Now, here's what I'll say. This is kind of a nice area in Baidu, actually, if you look at it, right? I mean, look where we are. We're going to open at 138 and change. Outside of this flash low back here, you're into an area that we've bounced many times in Baidu, going all the way back to August of last year. You make it to a low of 135.89. In December, you make it to a low of 132.14. You chop around at that area. You chop around at that area as well in February 24th. Yeah, so maybe, you know, you get in, give yourself a couple of dollars stop. If it touches those lows, you get out. But I would not be touching these equities. Now, take a look at BABA. All right, Alibaba. Here's what I'll say about this one. I've had this trend, chan trend channel up there for a while. This goes back to October of 2020. You're talking about 18 months, folks, a year and a half. Talk about a well-defined channel line, right? Wish I had gotten down there on the lows, but uh, I am not touching these stocks, okay? But I know we all love volatility. If you are looking at them, okay, take a look at it. Uh, you're nearing the top portion there. Now, I'm not sure that, you know, China's economy is going to go in the gutter. But all I know is how this channel line's looking, folks. And as tough as it was when you said, man, I wouldn't touch them then, well, you just traded. I mean, even if you got it at the lower trend line, 78 to 116, but you see where we're at. Now, I'm going to put this on a daily. All right. We touch it once on March 23rd, and basically we touch it again. You extend that line to the right. We're right near that channel line, folks. And if you trade to the lower portion, you talk about 72 bucks. Uh, now, again, I don't know if I'd be shorting those stocks out there when you have the Chinese uh, leader, and it looks like the economy out there, really looking to prop up the industry after kind of slamming them down. It's like a love-hate relationship across the board, but nonetheless, uh, China ready to rock it, huh? We'll see. 116.58, you're down to about 114. Um, there's definitely money that can be made there, folks, but I choose to trade other equities. That's all I'll say about that. I mean, you know, there's there's great opportunities in China if you can figure it out. But there's a lot of great opportunities across the board here. I mean, how about CrowdStrike yesterday, right? They were talking about CrowdStrike in the den. I mean, the last couple of days, boom, you explode higher as the market was struggling. Yeah, you traded lower as well, but strike CrowdStrike from 213 to 231, and you're not dealing with the potential for the Chinese dictator to come out and kind of throw a wrench into your trading plan. Uh, some of the other companies that come to mind. I mean, look at Roku from 118 to 140, man. I've been talking about Roku a while, especially when we got down to 100 bucks on Roku shares. Now, take a look at the Analyze tab on Roku. We're now talking about a company valued at $17.5 billion. You're up 30% from where you were at 100 bucks. Um, some, some of the other companies, even Zoom, has gotten quite a pop recently. Now, you know, you're dealing with some lofty valuations sometimes on the multiples, folks. Zoom is still at $36.6 billion. From 588, from 400, it's been a one way trip. Now I'm going to take this Fibonacci off there for some clarity. I'm going to put it back on a daily to zoom in on the recent action. And we might finally find a bounce there, folks. I mean, you have definitely, you know, if you were in a turn channel line here, I'm just drawing a simple line downside. Maybe we'll draw one that matches up on this side. All right, doesn't always have to be super complicated, folks. I'm going to activate that, bring it up a little bit more. All right, it's an art, not a science, okay? That's a pretty well-established channel line. 
Uh, that's a breakout, and that's going back to December. That's on a daily. Maybe you get a pop there, 122.39. You're dealing with a company still valued at $36 billion, but it's a profitable company as well in Zoom at 122.39. Some of the other companies that I think of that you want some volatility and some action, DraftKings, all right? Uh, you might be in a little bit of consolidation here. If you're looking for pops, you might get them longer term. If you're getting into this equity, you're going to deal with some volatility, man. They're going to be spending some money in a big way. As this uh, entire landscape changes in terms of gambling across the board, but it's coming, folks. They will be a big player. And on a fundamental basis in terms of where you are, you're talking about a company valued in the single digit billions. And I imagine if you have a stronghold as one of the online sites that people can gamble at, that there is an extreme amount of possibility for growth in that industry, folks. But we'll see. They got to make money. They're valued at eight billion bucks. But I imagine in the future, sports are going to turn into a gambling mecca, folks. It's already happening. Stay tuned. We got markets flat right now. We'll be right back for the open, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get markets open. You get the S&Ps right now, negative five, trading at 45.91. NASDAQ opening in the positive, up 15 points, down negative by 86. Crude off about five dollars. Uh, you look at the move we had on Tuesday. All right, some geopolitical de-risking 
It's amazing the market just reacted so much to the even notion that there may be a potential ceasefire or easing of things. You find out basically throughout the day that the government doesn't believe any of that. Maybe Russia's just repositioning or calming things down for a moment. We get the drop off from 108 down to 100 on the strategic petroleum reserve. But just like that, you're back to 103, man. If you're trading crude oil, Whew, God bless you, man. I can't imagine that market. Ten dollars in either direction. Let's talk about some fast fingers. Uh, gold up a bit, up four dollars as this market uh, trades off a bit. You got gold trading to 1943 right now. All right, jumping around to some of the other headlines in terms of stocks. We talked about the Chinese stocks, man. Uh, Novavax, they're higher in the pre-market after it asked the US EU regulators to clear their vaccine for use in teen teenagers. NVAX is their symbol. Uh, up 1.7 percent, pretty marginal action when you look at where it was yesterday and you look at where it's been recently. Some of these vaccine stocks, man, be careful. Even Moderna. Um, I believe in that technology tremendously, man. But whew, you talk about getting ahead of itself. And here's what I'll say about that one. Uh, I'm going to ballpark some of these numbers, but Merck was a huge investor in Moderna early on. I believe they got out of Moderna shares. I'm going to put this on a daily because it's just a lesson, folks. OK. When you see this type of stuff, insiders, et cetera, right? They don't know everything, but it's something to keep in mind, okay? This one was kind of a heads up. Merck sold their stake in Moderna during, I believe, all right, and I'm gonna ballpark some of this stuff, okay? The, the final quarter of 2020, okay? So they probably didn't get this full run up here, but my, I remember my thought in this process being that they saw Moderna run up to $87 in May, and then just like that, it was back to 46. They saw it get up to a price point again of 95 in July, and then saw it give it up again to a price point of 54. And guess what? Executives probably said when it got back up to this area, right, as you come into October, November, middle of November, you get back up to a price point of about $90. Executives say, you know what? We're not gonna let this thing get back down to 45 or 50 again. Let's sell our position. Of course, the run up, exceeds expectations, okay? Merck executives obviously had some idea of the potential of the true value of this technology that they had. They cashed out at this price point. If the market was at 500, do you really think they were that far off in their estimates? Of course it's possible, okay? Of course it's possible they could have had a breakthrough over that time that changed the world. They're trying to use that technology to apply it to many more things beyond COVID, okay? So that's possible. But in light of where this thing traded, you got back down to 122 a year and a half later almost, okay? Keep that in mind when you see that, okay? When you see companies, um, huge mammoth companies divesting from smaller companies, I mean, the similar thing happened with Tyson and Beyond Meat, I believe, okay? I've talked about this one many times. You had Beyond Meat coming out. They accelerate to 240 from a price point of 46. The market goes bonkers. They they start getting a valuation that had just made no sense, especially compared to the valuation of a company like Tyson, which just has the process build out, you know, the infrastructure to deliver um, goods, the infrastructure to deliver their products that Beyond Meat just doesn't have. Point being, yeah, trades up to 240, but here we are now what? You're talking about three years later almost on that equity and you're right back to where you started so pay attention to that sometimes as these big companies invest in smaller companies those smaller companies go public they catch a run early on the bigger company sells their shares because tyson's going to be producing the same thing they were in this to get in on it in the early stages it launches and then they say okay we don't need to be an investor in them we're going to start our own brand we need, we have the know-how now because we've been a member of the beyond meat team well, nonetheless. All right, we jump down to other equities making news. Uh, making news. AMD downgraded to equal weight from overweight, overweight cycl cyclical risk. I'll get it. In several different end markets for the semiconductor maker, they're a little bit lower. Let's jump around to some of those semiconductors, man. AMD, yeah, they're a little bit lower. All right, let's put it on a daily. Yeah, you're down about 3.6%. So the market heating that after the pullback it had yesterday. NVIDIA shares. Down about two thirds percent right now to 275. NVIDIA's had quite a bounce. Now, to take the highs that we've had in NVIDIA, I'm gonna ballpark the high, okay, that we had. I'm gonna take a little Fibonacci number here. We'll throw it on here, right to the 618, folks, okay? Now, I take the high that kind of correlates to all these bars, the best fit line sometimes, you know? Yeah, you could take the 346 level, that would be fair. You might even take it a little bit lower if you think the linear regression on the top portion of this area, right? Where'd you touch? right to the 618 folks, 286. You jump to a point of 289.46, but look where it is. 
the candle is actually right on the 618 of NVIDIA. Pretty cool, right? Uh, so market trades lower. There's your 618. And boy, if you ever get an A to B, C to D, folks, you're talking about from about 340 down to a price point of 210 that's a $130 leg you'd be coming off about 280 that would put you at 150 back in this thing out 150 on this chart and I don't know if it's going here I don't think it is actually okay but you got to keep it in mind folks because this market's a little crazy right now and at a time I mean you just saw the numbers that we got for Walgreens boots pretty strong numbers record retail uh, same store sales rising they beat on profit they beat on revenue and the stock trades lower yeah pretty crazy uh, yeah, you're looking at, you know, I'll, I'll post this article in the YouTube Tigers Den. They're talking about it. Folks, if you haven't signed up for it yet, please check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. The new Tigers Den, and not the YouTube, the Discord Tigers Den. Uh, it's live now. It's only a buck. Uh, our man G7 was just in there talking about it in terms of rental prices uh, rising. And let's talk about it because it's happening, folks, in a big way, but it's driven by market forces. And you know what? One of the reasons why I came down to Florida, okay? Now, this article is uh, from yesterday, okay? Yesterday morning, uh, record spike in rents hits Tampa Bay after newcomers flocked to Florida during the pandemic. Average rent for single family homes, condo units, small multifamily buildings increased more than 28% over the year. It's staggering but it's correlated to the rising prices of the actual properties. And that's the tough part about how you correct that. Um, and it's driven by demand, by either the inflationary tendencies in the market, okay, but also people flocking to the state. And that's where I started off. One of the reasons why I came to Florida, folks, was because of affordability and housing. I remember when I first came down here, and it is crazy to think about because I think it's pushing almost 20 years ago, not quite 20 years ago. I graduated college 20 years ago, spent a few years in Boston before I came down here before my 25th birthday. Uh, so maybe we're pushing 17, 18 years ago. Year before I was down here, my sister was down here for a year. She was able to get a one bedroom, maybe it was a studio, but I'm pretty sure it was a one bedroom, one bath unit in a complex that has a pool for I think $485 a month. Now that's 20 years ago almost, okay? First year I moved down, I think I was paying 585, maybe 525, I was paying in the 500s, folks. Even then, in the year 2004, maybe we'll call it 2005, it was comical to think of the idea that I could find anywhere that resembled anything like I was gonna get in Florida for $500 and change a month with a pool in my complex, beautiful, one bedroom, one bath unit with a pool um, in a unit. At that time in Florida, that was just not gonna happen, folks. It's still happening that way, all right? Some of the numbers they talk about in here, $1,000 a month for a nice place. Very difficult around the city of Boston, as I'm sure many of you know. We'll talk about it a little bit more when we come back. But I don't think it's changing, folks, because people have found out they can work remotely, live in beautiful Florida. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps down 11 points. Market turning in a little bit negative as we come into the opening action right now. You're trading at 45.82, backing things up on the S&P. That low we had yesterday, 45.75 in the S&Ps. Let me get the exact one. Yes, 45.74.75. We'll call it 45.75 in the S&Ps. Jump over to the NASDAQ 100. We just dip below that level. We got a 14,000 print in the NASDAQ 100. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon shares down about a quarter percent, 33.19 right now. We jump to the big dog, Apple. Look at that sell off. Watch out for Apple, man. Apple down nine tenths percent, 176.19. That's quite a sell off for Apple shares. Microsoft shares right now selling off as well. They're selling off the FANG stocks, 311.70 for Microsoft. We were just pushing 315 on the open uh, for Microsoft shares. We jumped to Facebook shares, trading lower as well to 226. We jump over to Netflix shares, down a percent as well. Uh, let's jump to some of those crazy growth stocks. Roku down about a percent right now. DraftKings down about 1.2 percent. Market, a little bit of a sell off. You got the Russell actually in the positive right now by two points. All right. Jumping back to, and we've seen the numbers, folks, and I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but that's that's my, you know, anecdotal personal story. But guess what? It's happening just much quicker, folks. I did it 20 years ago. I was in a, a perfect spot in life. Just graduated from college a few years back. I was single. My dad was down in Florida. Perfect opportunity to make the move. Not everybody is so fortunate to have that opportunity, but many more people now have that opportunity, especially with remote work. Now, I mean, you're dealing with video game numbers. I love that term. I stole it from our man, Kevin Hanks. But you're dealing with video game numbers when you're talking about 35%, right? You're talking about 28% rises in rents. But you're starting from lower numbers, folks, than you are starting in many of these bigger cities, especially New York, D.C., Chicago, Boston at 12%. Tampa starting at much more affordable rates. Well, guess what? That's changing now. And it's changing because there's going to be more income. People are going to be earning more when they can work remotely from almost any company in the world it's coming to. And I'm not even exaggerating when you say that. So, you know, being on the lower part of the socioeconomic chain, it is a tough deal, man. But this is where, unfortunately, you know, you get an influx of big workers, Florida, especially St. Petersburg, Tampa. Um, I mean, you got Bill Gates and Jeff Vinnick developing the water in Tampa by where the, the lightning plays, spending billions of dollars, folks. It's just been, you know, a, a city landscape that has cranes all over it, building a whole, whether you're talking about condos. Now, this is just in Tampa. And my dad set up his hub in St. Pete, which is rocking in a big way. But that doesn't even talk about the fact that you got Bill Gates and Vinnick building just a, a whole city, basically, on the water in Tampa. All of that contributing, folks, let alone you can't you know, have a conversation without talking about funds, buying up those properties, securitizing them, 
and probably not putting them back on the market anytime soon. There's really no reason to. It's been it's become a securitized asset. All right. And there are things that we can do, folks, to make homes more affordable for investors, uh, excuse me, for homeowners versus investors. Right. Um, there are ways to do that through regulations, all right, because it's going to become a pretty tough deal here as you got funds scooping up all the properties and you got people, more importantly, wanting to live in Florida, okay? But I mean, what they talk about here, you know, you're talking about a one bedroom apartment going for 1630, all right? In any city, folks, that's, that's rocking to the tune of Tampa, okay? Riverview, a suburb of Tampa, nice area. You're going to be pushing 15, 1600 bucks right now, folks. It's going to be happening with inflation and where you're at. Now, they renegotiated it for a 205 increase. What's that put it down to? Uh, something like 15, 25 a month, right? In many cities, 15, 25 a month for a nice apartment with a bedroom on your own is something that would be pretty affordable. All right. And uh, yeah, it depends what you can make in salary. But the thing that's happening now is that you can work anywhere. And I believe the minimum wage is 15 bucks in Florida, Duffy. I believe we passed that uh, on one of our constitutional amendments by a pretty strong number, um, even in a red state that's turned a little red. But uh, it's amazing when you take something away from politics and you just put it up by itself that uh, the people of Florida said, yeah, 15 bucks, man, let's go. And guess what? The state's just fine, folks. All right, let's jump down to some of the other equities. Got to make it down the list. Ken Ross Gold is in talks to sell a Russian mine to Russia-backed investment form, firm, according to people familiar with the matter. First sale of an asset left behind in Russia by a Western company. Looks like uh, Russian assets. You can find a bid. Go figure. KGC. Now, the interesting thing here is I remember my dad talking to Bob Buckham, which I believe was Ken Ross Gold. Okay, now I wonder if they got back into there. Let's take a long, long look, boy, because this interview I'm talking about, folks, yeah, is a long time ago, man. I'm talking about an interview somewhere in these years, okay? Um, they got down to almost nothing. You're at 592, but what he had talked about is he wasn't doing business anytime anymore in Russia because anytime that they had to do business, you risk the fact that Putin would just come in and steal all your findings. Um, and nonetheless, looks like they were still doing business and they, they're paying a little bit of a penalty. So Robinhood won a favorable ruling in Massachusetts case, a judge declining the state overstepped its authority in adopting a new fiduciary standard for brokerages operating in the state. The brokerage firm had been accused by regulators of encouraging its customers to take undue risk. So the judge declined that the state overstepped its authority. What is going on here? A favorable, favorable, favorable ruling in the case with the judge deciding the state overstepped. Okay, we'll get there. There we go. I need some more coffee, I guess. So uh, the state overstepped its authority in adopting new fiduciary standards for brokerages operating in the state. This is great, folks. Uh, I talked about it earlier. There's going to be this whole, you know, mantra that you got to protect retail investors because they don't know what they're doing. They're getting in over their heads. And yeah, they really crushed it in 2020. They took a beating a little bit in 2021 versus some of the other equities. Uh, ARC is the biggest... Uh, Example of that, we'll call it, in terms of the run-up in 2020 for all the retail meme stocks, uh, Tesla stocks and likes. Last year, we pay the price. This year, it's been a slow start. But, folks, the bottom line is you can't just keep investment vehicles for the ultra-wealthy. I mean, what's going on here is the reason why companies don't even go public anymore is because they don't have to. Now they just keep all that money for themselves and they do private equity right until they get all of those gains and then they push it out to the public when they think they've all been taken by the cream of the crop, okay? Uh, you can't just have options and defined risk trading vehicles only for those. Retail investors do understand a lot of that. And yes, there should be some level as there already is, okay? Making sure that these um, brokerages are not pushing products to people that are not qualified, okay? But when you're talking about, you know, a, a finance major in college that's 19 years old, you're telling me that person can go sign up to fight a war, but you're not going to give them the right to buy or sell a put or a call because they're 19 year old retail trader. OK, at some point, folks, people have personal responsibility for their money. Um, if they display some semblance of knowing what they're talking about, people should have a right to do that stuff. And you're going to see a real onslaught here, like somehow retail traders have no idea what's going on and we have to protect them to make sure that they can't. I even saw something earlier that you're going to have to start passing like a test to be able to trade that type of stuff. I mean, in some semblance, that might make sense. 
But you just got to hold these brokerages accountable for what's already on the books, folks. All right. I passed the Series 7. All right. You're not allowed to be allowing people to trade products that they're not suited for. That's already there. Okay. If they're pushing those limits, then we can hold them accountable. You don't need extra rules. People can take care of themselves overall. And you can't protect everybody by just telling them they can't do anything they want with their money. That's the bottom. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets in lower territory right now. You're looking at an S&P negative by 13 points right now. You put things on a 15-minute. And as you see, backing it up so we can see this morning's action versus yesterday's low, kind of right at that area. Be interesting where we're going to trade. Uh, critical area, you could say. That's where we charged higher at 345 yesterday afternoon. Russell holding up pretty well right now, up about seven points. We jumped to commodities. Gold up six bucks. Pretty decent action in the morning for gold. And you got crude oil right now. Down $3.50, but again, catching quite a bid, man. It'd be pretty remarkable if we get it all back, even with the news that potentially 180 million barrels in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve up to be released over the next months, etc. cetera. Uh, million barrels a day. We'll see if that news becomes something concrete or not. And we jump to bonds. You got the 10-year right now, plus six ticks, but we've given back some of the action. You got the 10-year yield 2.4. 
2.4, we'll call it, 2.4%, right near that number on the 10-year. All right, as we finish up the program, core personal consumption expenditure, we got that number this morning. Let's pull over the headline. And you're talking about 5.4% in March, highest since 1983. I think the market was looking for a little bit number, no, higher, higher number, though. What were they looking for? Maybe 5.4? No, 5.5. Yeah, 5.5 was the estimate. So we come in a little bit soft in terms of estimates. Uh, wages, tomorrow morning, folks, keep your eye on the non-farm payrolls at 8.30. I'll be doing my program at 9 o'clock. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He is coming up next. And don't forget, folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN.com. Check out the Tigers Den. Uh, last night, the great one of the great things about this that we're excited for, folks, is that you can use it on your phone. You can use it on your tablet. Uh, people in there last night chatting about the market, whether they're on their computer, tablet, phone. Uh, of course, very active during market hours from 7 till 4. No matter when you're in, folks, even if you jump in only when you have a moment when the market's ro oh, rocking, check it out for a dollar. We have some exciting stuff coming up in there. Uh, and we got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. And Basil's going to have a subscriber webinar for opening call subscribers uh, coming up in a couple weeks. The details of that to come out shortly, so stay tuned. And that will be in Discord as well. So that's going to be the great thing, folks. We got a lot coming up. Get in the Discord trading room because uh, we got a lot coming up for Tigers Den members, for subscribers of all our newsletters, etc. It's exciting, folks. Exciting times. As they say, Basil's up next. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Have a great Thursday, everybody.